Welcome back to Logic 101, I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on applying replacement rules. So we've learned a few replacement rules before, but so far we've only applied them individually in isolation. What we're going to be doing in this lecture, in contrast, is taking one statement and applying a whole bunch of replacement rules to it, and allowing us to go from a very complicated statement to a very simple statement through a repeated application of replacement rules. The other cool thing about this lecture is that we're going to be previewing what we do with proofs in a couple of units. In proofs, we want to have step-by-step -step calculations that explicitly show how we go from one statement to another, and that's what we're going to be doing here as we apply these replacement rules. We'll be very explicit in how we go from step one to step two and step two to step three and so forth. So let's get to it. Here is a statement on line one that says not, if not Q, then not P. That is a bit of a mouthful, and as it turns out, it simplifies to something much nicer than that. If you'd like to try this out on your own, go ahead and pause here and see if you can apply the replacement rules that we've learned so far to simplify that statement. And if you have tried that, good for you. If you haven't, let me give you a hint and see if this will help you out as you go through that replacement rule process. So my claim to you is that through a bunch of different replacement rules, we can go from line one to line five, which says P and not Q. My claim to you is that lines one and five are actually identical, and you can see that by applying replacement rules to that first statement and eventually working your way down to P and not Q. So again, this is a wonderful opportunity, if you didn't do it already, to go ahead and pause here and see if you can apply replacement rules to take you from line one to line five. And if you've done that, again, good for you. I hope you've submitted a comment to show me how you got from point one to point five. But if you haven't, let's go through this step by step together so we see how to do this. So I want you to notice that in line one, we have inside of the parentheses, a not Q implies not P. If you remember back to our lecture on contraposition, you might recall that you can simplify a in implication with a whole bunch of negations in it with contraposition. So contraposition says that if you swap the antecedent and the consequent, you can erase negations on both sides. So instead of having not Q implies not P, you can have just P implies Q. And of course, the negation holds through because we're just changing what's inside of the parentheses. So we still have the not P implies Q as the overall statement in line two. So line one, you contraposition the inside of the parentheses, and that's how you get from line one to line two. All right, next step. I want you to notice here that we have a negation on the outside of the parentheses. You might recall that De Morgan's allows us to distribute the negation on the inside of the parentheses, but only if we have a disjunction or a conjunction as the main operator within the parentheses. Currently, we don't have a disjunction or a conjunction on the inside. We have an implication. We have an if-then statement. So we can't apply De Morgan's to that statement. However, if we change the implication, if we go from an if-then statement on the inside of the parentheses to a disjunction on the inside of the parentheses, then we can distribute that negation. And you might recall that we have a way of changing implications to disjunctions, and that is through material implication. So if you take line two and apply material implication to the inside of the parentheses, you wind up with a negation of the antecedent and switching the arrow with a disjunction. So on the inside of the parentheses, you have not P or Q. And of course, the negation on the outside of the parentheses is holding through. So now that we have a disjunction on the inside of the parentheses, we can distribute the negation on the outside of the parentheses through De Morgan's rule. So remember that De Morgan's rule says that we can distribute all the way through. So instead of having not P, we have not not P. Instead of having a disjunction, we flip it and get a conjunction. And instead of having a Q, we have a not Q. So that gives us not not P and not Q through De Morgan's rule. And then the last step here to get from steps four to step five is to take the double negation on P and simply get rid of it, right? Double negation says that you can erase two negations because they are the same thing as just having no negations whatsoever. And so that gets us to step five, which is just P and not Q. So step one, that ugly expression on that line, not, not Q implies not P is identical to P and not Q. That's probably something that you didn't get just by staring at line one, but going through the 
different replacement rules that we've learned, you can actually show that this is the same thing. And that's really neat and that's really cool. And that allows us to understand what we're trying to say much better than if we were looking at just that mouthful that appears in line one. So that's an example of how to apply replacement rules. This can be difficult on your own because I know the tricks about how to go from an ugly looking expression like in line one to getting simpler expressions like line five by seeing, for example, that the negations in the implication could be replaced with a contraposition and also knowing that distributing the negation on the outside of the parentheses requires using De Morgan's rule, which can only be applied to disjunctions or conjunctions. I know these sorts of things because I've done this for a while. This is going to take a while for you to learn, to understand how you can go from these complicated expressions to the simple expressions. You need to know and have some sort of intuition about what's going to be simpler and what's going to be more complicated and be able to apply those replacement rules in the simpler way. Again, this is something that requires effort and requires time and requires practice. So if you had a hard time doing this one on your own, that's understandable. This will become easier and easier as, say, for example, we go through proofs and we do this in every single lecture. We'll have tons and tons of practice on this. So again, if this is too difficult right now, don't worry about it. It'll get simpler later on as you have more practice under your belt. Hope you enjoy this and I'll see you next time. Take care.